I got something I would like to tell you. Those of you who don't have no God on your side. If I were you today, I wouldn't wait too long. I'd find down on my knees and say, for God I live. And for God, I'm willing to die. You may not feel like you need it now. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to the Raw Spiel, where we keep it real with the hard truth. And I'm glad to have joining us today as a man that's keeping the legacy going. He is the son of the late Willie Banks. He is known to us as Mr. Willie Banks Jr. How, how, are you, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Uh, oh, same here. Doing, doing fine myself. And I'm just glad you was able to make the time to you know, be on this broadcast and you know, you know, share some experiences with us here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, and and let's just get started here, Bob. Could you just, uh, tell us how uh, how did you get started in the music industry? How 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 what was your like, way? What got you into the uh, music industry yourself? Well, um, what inspired me to want to do music um, full time was my father. Um, when I was a young boy, about eight years old. Uh, um, I was able to do some uh, traveling with him, mm. and um, and I, I, you know, I, so I was backstage, and I was at the record table, and in the dressing rooms, and I was able to mingle with um, not only his group and his members, but um, other groups, professional groups that were, you know, at these particular programs, these shows, and uh, from then on, um, I, I knew that music was what I wanted to do for a living that I want to travel and, and do music, you know? So I, I, I got the bug and I got it bad when I was a young boy and I've, I've had it ever since. <laughs> I hear you on that. So, um, so you, you play some bass. So did you, so, so you was in R and B for a while or in some else besides gospel? Well, um, I started out of, of course in church, oh, but, yeah. um, I currently play R and B um, with Eric Benet, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I do a lot of studio work as well. But um, he's the only artist that I actually travel with, so I, I, I travel mm -hmm. with him. And uh, you know, he he's a good guy. He um, has a church background as well, so we, you know we get the clown backstage in the dressing rooms, mm -hmm. and you know, singing and closing like we're preaching, and you know just having fun, you know, just reminiscing about church. And um, I still play for church as well. I play for um, Bishop Daryl Hines of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. And and, uh, and I played, but, you know, previous to that, I played for Bishop R.J. Burt, Greater New Birth Church, um, you know, for um, nearly 20 years. But I currently play with Bishop Daryl Hines of Christian Faith Fellowship Church um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Oh, man. So, so you have your hands full. So between... Playing behind uh, Mr. B uh, Bonet and your own group in the church, you, you you got yourself a pretty full schedule. Man. Well, yeah, um, I I, uh, I do more than that actually. You know, I, I still no. do freelance work. You know, so you know, I do this for a living. So yes, this sir. this is what I do. You know, so mm -hmm. I enjoy it. You know, yeah, that's good. And um, and since you, I'm glad you mentioned that. So you. Got some R and B work in, in the gospel. So if, if I, I want you to, I, I guess, share your experiences in, on both sides, because you know, listening to like on other platforms, I think of a guy in particular. He was he's a promoter, and I, I and I heard him on another social media uh, platform. He was saying that okay, he, he promotes both gospel and I believe blues to uh, Southern Soul or something like that. And, and he was saying that that is more difficult 
he, he was saying that the gospel singers was, was more difficult to work with. And I, I just want to, I don't know, since you, you know, done both, doing both, I just, I, like to, I guess from the business aspect, you know, um, as, a, as you're doing your rhythm and blues, I mean, the R&B, as versus the gospel, as, you know, I, I guess, which, before, like, business, uh, which one handled their business better, the secular side or the gospel? gospel side? Well, well, I, I think it's unfair to say that gospel doesn't handle business. Well, it's, it's more difficult to work with gospel. It just depends mm -hmm. on the artist. It depends on their, mm -hmm. their team, their management. Yeah. You know, um, you have, you know, good, good management and then you have not so good management and both sides you know so right. that's just not true for gospel um it's, it's, it can be true for you know the secular arena as well so um it just depends on you know who you have representing you and you know managing you and taking care of the business and um it, it really doesn't matter what genre of music or you know whether it be secular or gospel um it just depends on your team who you have you know representing you that's that's been my experience you know mm -hmm. i've seen the good and bad on both sides of it you know so yeah i i don't i wouldn't say that it's just a something that happens in the gospel arena you know mm -hmm. because um you know you have your what we call divas in both of them you know you have oh, some yeah. people that some people are harder to work with than others you know so it just depends on you know the nature of their team you know okay yeah yeah i'm glad you brought that out that that's that's a good and fair fair answer you know it's just um you know i just you know, much that i enjoy a quartet you know it just it, it just seemed like uh, well, yeah, you mean the quartet seems like just have a, a a bad name, you know, of, of things that, of you no know, thing, you know, running around chasing women, um, uh, you know, like business aspect, the money and things of that nature. So it's it's so so it's good to hear, you know, it's just because it's gospel, you, you know, you go all of them all of them will give you a hard time. Right. So it's just it's across the board, not just. In the sacred, but sacred and secular, it's just you know, like I said, it's a thing of management, I guess. You know, so. yeah, and you know, the the major difference is in, in you know, um, well, yeah, the major difference would be just the budget. You know, um, right. sec secular shows, you know, they just they have a bigger budget than the you know, especially more than quartet shows, anyway. Right. Um, but it, but even with that, it depends on who you're working with. You know, you have some promoters that have a big budget in gospel and they can, you know, they can spend the money, you know, mm. and then, um, but, but for the majority of the time, especially in quartet gospel, you know, we have, a, it's a much smaller market, you know, right. so with a smaller market, you know, you have less money. And so the quality may not be as good as if you were to, you know, experience a more secular show where they have more of a budget to make sure that certain things are in place and you know have people positioned to do certain things you know so when you look at it like that you know then you you get to understand you know that it's it's just it's just two different arenas you know mm -hmm. it's, there's a it's a quartet it's a, it's a smaller market um and we're working on you know trying to build it back up like it was you know like i can remember back in the the 80s early 90s when quartet you know you could you could pack a house a pack an arena out you know there, there were times where you could do that and it kind of died off but uh i believe that those times are coming back you know quartet shows are getting uh the production of the shows rather are getting better you know much better mm -hmm. you know and uh I'm just excited about what it can be and what it's what it's becoming. You know, we have these younger artists um, as well as the older, but the younger artists they're pushing the envelope, and mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm glad to see it. And I'm hopefully you know I can I can help you know the process along with you know with what God has given me to do. Yes, indeed. I, and um, yeah, we're talking to Willie Banks Jr. the 
the son of the the legendary late Mr. Willie Banks. And and you know, um you talking about getting the quartet to the level that they can be. I one group I think about in particular is the is the blind boys of Alabama. I, I, I tell you, I, I know one I was talking to Mr. Um Fred Rice not that long ago of the Pigment Jubilee. He was he was with the blind boys and I, and I tell you that one particular time I looked at the itinerary I haven't looked at it lately but man them, those guys they they do a lot of work overseas I look at them like month to month man they, those guys like stay busy no. super busy packing packing you know all the toys and things of that nature now if but if you notice you won't see them on a show with Harvey Watkins or with Doc McKenzie right. Right. And with uh, Darrell McFadden, the Disciples, and with the Swannies, and with Spencer Taylor, and you know the QCs, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know uh, CC Williams, you know, you won't see them on those type of shows. They're they're in a different market. It's a, still a gospel market, but it's a different. It's it's more of the uh, the white market, the white gospel <laughs> market. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, so yeah, you. like because if you look at those audiences, it's white people. You know, they're doing. Right. You can see them on the House of Blues. You can see them on festivals, you know. Oh, so yeah. so their management has them in a different market. It's still gospel, and they're still, mm-hmm. you know, representing God, but it's a, it's a different market, and um, they're thriving. And it's, you know, they're, they're, their yeah. audience appreciates their sound and what they do. So, they yeah, they're going to keep packing houses until they can't do it anymore. It's just <laughs> this is what it is, you know. And... Um, I think that's one of the things that that kind of holds us back as you know the black artists in uh quartet gospel. We kind of limit ourselves. We don't reach out to those markets, or we mm-hmm. have a hard time getting into those markets. Mm-hmm. So if you know if we can find a way to bridge that gap and still keep our audience, you know, and you know gain a bigger audience like they have, you know, tap into that arena as well. I believe, man, we can. We can make some big things happen, and uh, you know these some of these groups that are so good can reach a broader audience. Uh, I'm I'm so glad you brought that up because that you talking about taking quartet to that next level. That that that's what I that's what I, w- I would like to see. Guys like yourself, um, Daryl McFadden, and, and the Swannies, to have that kind of you know to have that have that kind of reach like the blind boys have. So, so I, you might answer it, but what, what would what do you think would, would take for artists like that, like yourself and the Daryl McFadden's or the, uh, the Doc McKenzie's to to get an audience, to, to, to get a, a following like the the blind boys of Alabama have? But that, that, that seemed like a, something that all your guys ought to be reaching for. Well, um... Uh... Well, in in my opinion, it's all about relationship. It's about um, de- developing a relationship with somebody from that arena, and uh, you know, just talking with them and just setting it up. You know, we just have to um, b- develop a relationship with with folks that work in that arena that can you know that can bring attention to your group and that can get you in there. You know. Um, I don't know. I can't say that guys aren't trying to do it, but yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I just think that if we, you know, develop that relationship, it's all about relationship at the end of the day. It's about who, you know, you know, right. and, um, you know, and, and about, you know, represent good, having good representation, having somebody that knows what to say and how to, you know, interact with the right people to, to, you know, get, get these groups on their radar, right. you know, but I, I believe it can be done. You know, it's just, you know, if we would just broaden our thinking, you know, I'm not saying that they aren't, but, you know, that's that's just something that I think that if we make the effort, I, I think that that arena will welcome welcome these groups in happily. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, developing a relationship with the right people and, uh, you know, somebody taking a chance on us and us and we representing in the proper manner with the proper, you know, management people in management doing the right things and you know being integral and just i, I think it can work out yes sir i'm telling you i would 
And all I like to see there, you know, just, just, just flip the TV channel and Fox News and just to see Willie Banks Jr. on there. You know, hey, whatever, whatever guy says, you know, <laughs> yes, I, I, I would love to be in that circuit because it's, you know, it's a thriving circuit and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and it, you can, you know, it's just, there's so many more people that to sing to than just mm-hmm. our folks all the time in the same cities, you know, and in the same, same exactly. churches, you know, there's so much more to, you know, people that we, so many more people we can reach rather, you know, oh, yeah. especially on the West coast, you know, hits, hit some markets that, you know, we're not um, necessarily known to hit, you know, like mm-hmm. like the west coast you know like seattle wow. and hit la more and colorado and you know arizona and you know those markets you know there's a lot of a lot of country here that we haven't <laughs> that we don't touch That's you true. know you know and then like you said we can reach abroad you know once you get in those circuits and the right people hear you man you can be flying um all overseas, you can do Europe, you can do Africa, you can do, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the UK, yeah. you know, even Asia. You got you got Asian guys singing quartet now, you know. So you know, is the opportunity is there, and the internet has made the world so much smaller. We're all connected now. There really isn't any excuse. We just have to, you know, put in the work and you know, um, be intentional with the direction we're trying to go in as far as broadening our horizons. Now, I don't want to over-talk you, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, oh, no, man. Look, hey, yeah, the, 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 the less I talk, the better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's what you're on here for. <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah, you know, I, I believe it can be done. You know, we have a lot of great people, a lot of great artists, you know, and um, we just we just have to develop the relationship and bridge the gap through relationship. I, yes, and that's so important. You know, I, I see it time and time again, um, especially in a secular arena. It's all about relationship. Relationship mm. will get you where your money can't, mm. you know, so that it's very important, you know, you know, um, to just develop relationships with the right people, with key people. And there don't yeah. have to be many of them. Just there has to be the right people. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's my whole. All good points. I, I would like to I would like to see that they come when they're like you said, like the Willie Banks Jr., the Darren McFadden's, um, the Daryl Petty's or on that big stage. They're going overseas on on, on a regular basis like the uh, the blind boys are doing. So that, yeah, there's no reason why Harvey Watkins and Doc McKenzie and you know Spencer Taylor, those guys can't be on the same stages as the Blind Boys. There's no reason why they shouldn't be. Yeah. These are legendary groups mm-hmm. that you know. I know those people that that are those that crowd would enjoy those guys. I know they would. You know, yes, sir. it's good, good, good gospel music. You know, and uh, I, I believe that they could thrive in that market. I really do, and you know, along with others. You know, and um, I, I just I'm I'm just excited about the future because I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I think it's going to happen because we have a lot of bright young people, a lot of bright young minds, you know, coming in and that understand business, that understand marketing. Mm-hmm. We just got to, you know, get guys to be um, professional, like we say in a row, off the court as well as on the court, off the stage right. as well as on the stage, you know, and, uh, you know, represent in a way that, you know, not 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 that these guys are so high and mighty on this end, but no, on the other end, but, you know, y- y- your actions do speak volumes about you, you know, and you have to be somebody that they can, um, they can trust off the stage, you know, to take care of business and, you know, have good people around them to kind of keep things in line, you know, that's where good management comes in and, having somebody that understands how to really um, how to really present a, a artist and to present a group, you know, those things are important. You know, you'd be surprised how the little things mean so much being professional. Mm-hmm. You oh know, yeah. You know, the little things, you know, like just being on time and 
not, you know, supporting each other and not being so wild. If you're a wild guy, hey, you're a wild guy, but you don't have to let everybody know. You don't have to be so mm -hmm. wide open with it. You know, at least try to, you know, be professional, you know, because people, they'll remember your bad before they remember your good, you know. Mm. And I know it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate, you know, but it's it's the reality, you know. And that's how Quartet got got that reputation that it got, you know, because it doesn't matter how well you can sing, somebody always remembered that mess that you were in or that thing that that negative thing that you did or or said, you know, and it's like I said, it's unfortunate, but people don't forget those type of things. You know. Definitely. So if we can if we can just, you know, be more mindful and be more intentional in how we move, I believe that that um, God will open some doors for his, for his groups, for, his, for the people that's representing him, especially in the quartet arena. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, you know, I'll be looking forward to that myself, you know, and it's, it's funny you, you mentioned the, the the UK. I was sharing with Mr. Arthur Croom and his, and his family. Um, yeah, but the, the way I play, I, I, I play guitar, and, and I... I, I played like a old style. I, I, I play slide, you know that bottleneck style. You know, uh huh. Yeah, I, I I play that style. You know, a young guy. This it's been a couple of years ago. Now, there's the power of the internet. Like you said, the internet makes the world smaller. Or whatever. Now he heard me. He heard me play online, and he was. Now he let me know. Yeah, he's from the UK, and he was trying to get me to. Know to fly over there and know possibly like, do a tour. That just based on I, I wasn't live anyway. I was just at home playing, and he he heard me, and he was he wanted to get me over there. Well, no reason I ain't go because I back then I had a thing about flying. I, you couldn't get me on mm -hmm. no plane, you know, a few years ago. But it, you know that's it's just that I'm that's just amazing to me. I ain't I'm not all that, but you know, you know just just by what he heard. Yeah, that was another. He, I mean, he wanted me over there. He was begging me to come over there and do a little yeah. tour. So there, there's room for everybody. Yes, it is. There, there really is room for everybody, you know. And um, if you can find your niche, you know, what I'm saying you can be successful. You know, um, a lot of times we try to be successful outside of what we do. You know, yeah. trying to trying to pattern after somebody else, and uh, mm -hmm. you, you you lose every time that way, in my opinion. But uh, if you just go ahead and be who you are, you know, and uh, you, you'll be all right. Somebody appreciates what you do and be the oh. best at what you do. You know, be 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 good at it. You know, take the time to, to, to craft it and to perfect it. And, you know, people will notice that. And, and that's one thing I found out, too, you know. Speaking speaking to one of the um, soulsters the other day, they was they were telling me like overseas they 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 eat that stuff up. There's there, there's um traditional um gospel and like that old stuff I do. Man, they overseas that's that's man. Like but well like over here that's like in the US that's like oh man that's old time and we need to you know jazz it up. But o overseas, man they they love that old traditional gospel music. I can so be I'm, a witness. Um, I've I've been a lot of places, you know, uh, and uh, they they really do. Not only in gospel, but in secular music too. They just like the older. They can appreciate, you know, mm -hmm. the older style of singing. You know, the older music. They really. I mean, they'll come out and support it and buy tickets for that stuff. You know, and sell out. You'll sell out. You know, it's just they. They have a different appreciation for it than uh, we do here in the states. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Might get my, might renew get my passport. Do something. Yeah, <laughs> man. Get it, get it together, man. This this work out there for you, man. Yeah, I tell you, that's that's something. But um, yeah, we again we're speaking to Mr. Willie Banks Jr. So, so so you was able to travel up and down the road with your father. So. Did he live long enough to see you um, pursue your music career, or, or take an interest? Well, yeah, yeah. Did he? Yeah, did he live long enough to see you take off in your uh, music career, or to yeah, yeah, to 
to start off in his uh, to, um, um pursue it. He he did um I had a group uh with some family members of mine, uh we were called the Young Gospel Travelers. We were like um 14, you know, 14, 12, you know, around that age. We weren't even, you know, 18 yet. Young boys. We weren't even in high school yet. And uh I we did our little thing around Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I'm from, and you know, made a little name as the they called us the boy wonders. Who are these little boys singing and playing like grown men, you know? And uh um around 1992, right before he died in 93, with mm-hmm. 92, I was about 15 years old. Um, we opened up for him. He came to Milwaukee and we we opened up for him. And uh one of the songs I sang was one of his songs, God Will Take Care of His Own. We sung that. And uh, he peeked out of the dressing room, was looking, because he didn't know I could sing. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> he, he, he didn't know. And uh, and then uh, once he, he got on stage, he called me up to sing background on the song with him. And uh, I came up and I sang, and uh, he started crying. That's the first time and the only time I saw my dad cry. Mm. And he, he's like, you know, he was he was just, I guess it was tears of joy. He, he was like, yeah. my son can sing, y'all. And he was trying to take me on the road with him then, but my mama wouldn't, she wouldn't let me go. She's like, no, he got to finish mm. school and, you know, all this stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, so he got a chance to hear, you know, that he had a son that could, you know, sing and play and, you know, and, kind of following his footsteps at that point. But um, he died shortly after that. He died uh, not even six months after that. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't get a chance to really sing with him like I wanted to. I wanted to be, you know, his right-hand man. I was going to be the mm-hmm. second lead guy or whatever whatever he needed me to be. You know, I just wanted to travel with my with my dad, you know. But, um, you know, that accident messed him up pretty bad and, um, it was a blessing that he lived as long as he did, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but uh, yeah, he, he was, he was sick, but he was still singing, you know, like he said on the battlefield for the Lord and uh, there is no retirement in God's services. So he, he sung until he died, literally, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm just glad that he, I did get an opportunity to stand on stage with him and, you know, at least once and sing yeah. and, you know, and, you know, show him that, you know, that I was, you know, following in his footsteps. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go back out there on VHS or something. That, that, that'll be uh, a- I think there's a guy um, that has it, but I, I got to find I think he passed, but mm. some of his um, children may have those videos because he, he recorded everything, mm-hmm. you know, and um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if maybe he had it, but uh, that was that's a moment I'll never forget. Um, you know, it was just being able to sing with my dad, you know, I have pictures, but I don't have any audio of it, right, you know, so right. I'm, I'm trying to see if anybody had any audio of it, but yeah. No, oh, man, that's, you got pictures, oh man, that's, shoot, that, that's sweet too, man, you got, man, y'all too on style, I, I, I think about that sometimes, and man, that would have been a, a good combo, you know, Billy Jr. and Sr., you know, if he was able to live, you know, live longer. You know, y'all mm-hmm. two just sharing the leads. And man, that's well, that'd have been something to see there. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I was planning on being with Harvey, you know, Harvey, like Harvey Watkins and yeah. his dad, you know, Pop Watkins. I that's that was my plan, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, but it didn't, you know, God, God saw fit to take him on home. So I'm just glad that um, I was able to get the time I did with him, you know, and to glean from the knowledge that you know he had because he had a wealth of knowledge as far as you know singing and and, um you know just you know how to be on stage and how to sing like the man had technique you know Mm -hmm. so um i'm just excited you know and i'm 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 grateful that i was able to you know have an opportunity to kind of see behind the scenes how everything went and how everything you know took place how how he was able to execute like he did, you know. Oh yes, I tell you, we're again speaking to 
Willie Banks Jr., son of the the legendary, the late Willie Banks. I, I tell you, um, <clears throat> I was, like I said, I, know, I guess like some of us, I, I guess, I guess the large number of us didn't, didn't know you existed. Mr. Banks had a son. You know, I was, I was sitting back and thinking, there's there's a there's an episode of um of Good Times where James saw his father for the first time since he was a little child. And I and I was you know, when, when I seen you um James asked his father, he said, said, Man, where you been? And I said, yeah, that's that's kinda how I feel when I when I saw um say Willie Banks Jr. I'm like I said, man, man, where you been? Huh? Well, let me clear Willie this Banks up, Jr. though. Yes, sir. Willie Banks Jr. is not my what's on my birth certificate, right? Right. Yes, sir. My name is Afton Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, Willie Banks Jr. has been a nickname of mine ever since I was a little boy because, you know, now we do. There are more brothers. There are more sons. Okay. But um, I look the most like him and I'm only one that's kind of doing music is following his footsteps. So they, they always call me, you know, little banks, you know, you know, banks junior, but, uh, I actually have a sister named little banks. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah. But, uh, they always call me little Willie, you know, ever since I can remember, you know, just, so mm -hmm. I was just in, and, and uh, believe it or not, God told me, to to come out as Willie Banks Jr. I, I didn't want to do it, you know, mm. because I knew that Willie Banks Jr. didn't exist. You know, I got mm -hmm. older brothers, you know, um, but there there was no junior, you know. Mm. So uh okay. Yeah, so that's just I'm just the one, I'm the same height, same shoe size, I mean, everything, you know, look like them, you know, just so it was just. That's just how how the how the, the chips fail. <laughs> oh yeah, I tell you, that's, and you have your and you have your own group, the end time messengers. So we, so y'all pretty much. Um, I, I know I know you got your own sound, and and it's it, and I'm I'm glad you guys are you know carrying on the, the legacy. Yeah, we're that just is, getting started, but um, okay. Yeah, we're 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 moving forward. You know, it's 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 a lot trying to you know when you're first starting out. It's a lot that has to be done, mm -hmm. and you know, and um, you know, I, I've I've been able to develop a relationship with uh people like Harvey Watkins Jr. Yeah, and uh, you know, Darrell McFadden and those guys, and they're they're telling me, you know, just don't you don't have to rush it, man. Just take your time and you know, do it right. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. So that's what I'm doing. Um. If I can give you a quick testimony, um, yeah, cool, cool. Um, I was I was supposed to do a show down in um uh, I'm right now I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, but I was supposed to do a show in uh where is it? South Carolina, North Carolina, and uh, I wasn't able to do it. I, I wound up getting sick. Uh, my potassium had gotten so low that uh, my kidneys were shutting down, almost died, mm -hmm. and uh, you know had a really bad fever and. Um, respiratory infection and was really dehydrated and um so i wasn't able to do the show and um that was i believe that was god's way of letting me know hey slow down you know don't don't rush it I, you know get get everything in order you know yeah. um you know because uh sometimes you know you're so eager to do stuff and get get the ball rolling and you want to hurry up and get stuff done but you know, it may not always be in God's timing, you know, so I'm right now, I, I took the rest of the year off. We're, we're still, you know, working on the record and stuff. And we'll talk about that a little later, but mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, um, I had to slow down a little bit and make sure that, you know, the business of everything is right, you know, right. Get, get you know, get everything right. And, um, you know, get everything in order so when we come out we can come out as strong as possible yeah oh yeah man that's yeah i guess i guess um no god has his way of getting getting our attention oh he sure does I he can, definitely I, got mine I, I know i can go on and on myself about this yeah he can he has his way you know, that'll, that'll 
going to snap you right up. Yes, indeed. And um, <clears throat> I understand. So, so, so you married and you, you have children of your own. Yeah, I've been married. Um, I've been married 24 years oh, and okay. uh, I have three children. Uh, I have two daughters and a son. You know, I have two two girls in college and uh, my son, he's getting ready to graduate high school in in the spring. So uh, I'm getting closer and closer to being an empty nester. Not quite, but uh, <laughs> getting there. And um, yeah, I want to ask you about that. Okay, so you so you married what twenty three years? You said twenty four. Twenty four years. Twenty four years. That's not that. That's a blessing there. And yeah. and no no being married. So if you don't mind sharing, you no. Know, how how are you able to you know balance your your marriage and your music career? I I, I know. I know when some sometimes some men um trying to pursue their music career, sometimes that'll that'll be a, a strain on the marriage. But so how so how how are you able to how how is your marriage able to endure, you know, you being on the road, you have a wife and children at home. How you how are you able to, to, to keep things together? Well, I I'll say this communication is a strong foundation in any relationship. And uh right. my wife uh, I was doing music. I've been a road musician since I was 16 years old. Mm. I, I got married at 21. So my wife, uh, she kind of knew what she was getting into when she married me because I was already kind of doing it, you know, already. So she 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 um, understood the assignment, if you will. Um, yeah. And she's been very supportive. You know, we've had our ups and downs, you know, and you know, we've had we've had some hills to climb at times, you know, and there are some times where I had to work jobs and, you know, work temp jobs and, you know, back and forth. But uh, through it all, you know, she when you find somebody that is willing to go take that journey with you, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's, it's a blessing. And that's what she's been for me. You know, she's been uh, a, a great support to me. You know, she um, she understood that music is something I, I've, I've always loved to do and that I, I believe that God has gifted me to do and ordained me to do. And um, she's she's been supportive, man. And then to this day, she still supports me and we support each other, you know, because she has her thing going on, too. You know, not musically, but she's an awesome businesswoman and entrepreneur. And uh, and it's. I, I, I one thing I must say, she loves being a wife, and you don't find that these days. Like she, she <laughs> likes being a wife and a mother. She enjoys that, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think that's special because it's hard to find women that enjoy, you know, being a mother and a wife. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. trying to, you know, do their own thing, and you know, <laughs> and it's just, it's. I, I've been blessed to find a woman that, you know, that. Uh, that 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 has that type of attitude and she can still handle business you know so i, I consider myself blessed i'm gonna tell you well I'll, I'll tell you i like to hear that he says she, she likes to be a wife and a mother I and mean, may not i mean that, that's a whole other topic right there man yeah it is <laughs> yeah, because, it is we can talk about that a while yeah <laughs> but yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 something we've matter of fact that, that's something we have talked on you know this this broadcast here the, the raw spiel we, we 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 touch on things like that we touch on things like uh, uh, abortion and you know and, and marriages you know those just just things that's going on in the world and mm -hmm. I had my pastor was on here with me too for for almost a year and you no know, we yeah you know, we cover those things the marriages you know how, how what is a um, what's the role of the husband. And role of the wife, that's according to what the scripture says. Not, not, not this reality TV stuff here and mm -hmm. and social media and that that all that junk can really bust up a home. But, yeah, but you know, it it, will. It, yeah. So, so I'm, so I'm, I'm glad to hear you have a wife that really support what you're doing, and most importantly, love, love being a wife and a mother. Mm -hmm. So that that's. I better get off of that. <laughs> yeah, and she, it, it's, it's crazy. She's amazing. I mean, she really yeah. is amazing in my eyes because, you know, 
Yeah. It's it's you know, she she's able to 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 juggle a lot of things, you know. And uh I, I thank God for her. And I thank God for trusting me with a woman like that, allowing a woman like that to love on me the way she does, you know, because yes, you know, hey, I can, you know, I can be a problem sometimes, you know, with you know, she's patient with me as I am with her and we, we make it work and we continue to make it work. You know, we I plan to be married to her for the rest of my life, you know. Ain't nobody mm-hmm. going nowhere anytime yeah. soon. So, yeah. I tell you, man. I tell you, that makes a that makes a world of difference knowing someone you got someone by your side who's you know, got your back, not not pushing not pushing against you. Because I've 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 seen that happen. You know, a man out there want to make a <clears throat> make a living doing the music, but that wife is just not fully on board, and that just you know everything crumbles. So it's just I'm I'm really happy to hear that she, you have a wife that you know has your back and that, that's supporting what you're doing and you know y'all supporting one another. That that's that's that's, that's a good foundation to have. And yeah, I, we you know I, we I know we've you know. made all the we've made a lot of mistakes along the way, but um through it all we 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 were able to stick together. You know, it's it's you know it's not all peaches and cream all the time and it had you know right. over the years you know 20 24 years going on 25 you know I, I i got some stories to tell you know but mm-hmm. but uh we've been able to overcome some great obstacles you know yeah. and uh i i i, I counted a blessing to have somebody that i can trust and that right. you know that has my best interest at heart you know and i have hers as well that at, you know her best interest at heart too and uh and I, I'm just thankful. Oh yes, that's good here. I got, no, like I said, we in this broadcast we cover just a wide variety of topics. You know, even from transgender. There's, um, you know, I spoke to a guy maybe, maybe a month ago. He he passed away. I uh, think he died for like an hour and, and went to heaven. And no, no, wrote a book about it. So, okay. So yeah, I tell you, yeah, that's. And uh, I'm, I'm always glad to hear, you know, about, you know, to, to hear, a marriage is going well because you know, I don't, man, I, man, I ain't me, ain't mean to go this route here, but you know, it's just, just so many marriages nowadays just falling apart. You know, just, just divorce rates just skyrocketing, and, and you know, just to hear. A man, um, husband and wife, weathering the storm. I'm, 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 I'm glad to hear that, man. It's just, I'm, 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 I really am. I'm happy for you. Thank you, uh, brother. I'm glad to be able to say it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we have to. We're talking to Mr. Willie Banks Jr., the son of the late Willie, legendary Willie Banks. And uh, and I I tell you he I tell you your father your father left behind um, um, volumes of song like the song we just played um to begin the broadcast like like too late I mean yeah. it's a song like a song like that man I I, I don't know how to describe it. It, it it just it just makes you think he and was that, a that, master that, storyteller that, exactly that, that just just my point man it just that. that that's just the words you 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 can envision what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 it's just a yeah, that's that's yeah. just a, a gift he had. Yeah. yeah, that song and then um the song about the little girl, you know, that got sick. She was partying, you know, having mm-hmm. what she called herself a real good time, and God struck her down on her sick bed, and you know, and uh, while she was down, God touched her body, and the doctors didn't understand, you know how how she recovered the way she did and you know just i mean just all these stories and he 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 presented them with so much detail you could you could put oh, yeah. yourself in the song you know you could you could literally like you said you could visualize it and um he was he was very talented at that you know and uh I, that's something that i definitely want to work on you know because <laughs> uh <laughs> that's not easy to do you know and that's what i was saying earlier about technique and you know really understanding how to go get a song across and, you know, really oh, yeah. keep the people engaged and, you know, how to make people think, like you said, uh, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely a gift from God, you know. So. I'll tell you that, that too late and, um, 
man, no, just just the music, the, the background, the, 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 the trembling guitar. It's it's just so it's so dark and heavy. It's, 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 it's almost almost scary. <laughs> now he was with that. Now that was a super group. Now that's when he was with the Jackson Southern Air. No, yeah, yeah. no, that wasn't even the Messengers. That was before mm. the Messengers. You know, so that was okay. no. He was he was with Huey Williams and Frank Williams and you know those oh, guys. Man. You know they had a and, uh, and among others. You know I can't name them all right now, but uh, yeah, those guys were you know trendsetters. They were trailblazers. You know, and um, it's just that sound is still relevant, believe it or not, mm-hmm. especially, you know, in that uh, that arena that we were talking about with the blind boys, man, they would kill that arena, man. Those people go crazy mm-hmm. hearing that type of stuff, you know, and it's just, so there's room for everybody. You know, all we have to do is, like I said, develop relationships and bridge the gaps between the two, you know, arenas, man, you know, the two markets, you know, and I believe it can be done. If we if we you know be intentional about it, okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm still stuck on so he wow. So he was with the Jackson Southern Air. He so he recorded that with the Jackson Southern Airs. Yeah, he so was. I, with, yeah. Okay. I I thought I come across a yeah a YouTube video and I heard the Jackson Southern Airs um um you know, singing that song too late. I, I so I, I for some reason I thought there was Huey Williams leading that. No, that was that was well. Th- there is a version with Huey Williams leading it. Oh, okay. But the original is with Willie Banks leading it. Oh, okay. okay. A young Willie Banks, yeah. Oh man, that's yeah. Ooh, so. that, that's that is something. Yeah, wasn't was he wasn't your father with the the volunteers too? For, yeah, for uh, for, yeah. For yeah, he was actually, um, if I'm not mistaken. He was actually one of the original members of the Violinaires. Oh wow! Yeah, but uh, he said he couldn't sing high like that. You know, <laughs> those oh, yeah. guys say sung too high for him. But um, yeah, if I if I'm not mistaken, I heard him say that he was one of the original members of the Violinaires. So oh, he, had, he had he has a rich history in uh in you know in quartet music, and gospel music, you know, very rich. He sung with a lot of people, and you know. Was able to do a lot of things over to over the time, but well, even before the messengers, you know. So, yeah, that that is something. Yeah, that's. I tell you that that is that, that's that's a history lesson here. Yeah. Uh, did he? So they have any? Do the volunteers have any recordings with it with him? What was he the, the one of the lead singers or? Now, now, now you you're going past me. I don't, oh, I, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, I, you would have oh, to okay. ask somebody from that time, you know. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, I don't. I, I that's all I know at this point about that. Okay. Because he spent some time up north in Detroit, and um, you know, so uh, but I don't, I don't know all the all of the history. I just ran across some information about that. You know. Oh, okay. I'm too young yeah. to know about all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I like to I like to dig into history and know, you know learn about stuff like that, you know. I guess. You gotta realize if Willie Banks was still alive, he would be in his nineties. Yeah, that's you know, he would be up there with Spencer Taylor, you know, in that in that age range. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, so Yes, indeed. You know, Mr. Willie Banks Jr. here we're speaking with, and um, so you're so you're working on a new project with the, the end time messengers. What, what, yeah, what, y'all, y'all, y'all have any projects coming up? You working on? Yeah. I thought you had mentioned it early on. I'm working on a a, a tribute. Okay. Uh, working on a tribute, and uh, the reason I haven't released is because you know we have some um, have some legal stuff we have to take care of before we can right. properly release it. So right. um, once once I get that squared away, you know, um, you, you'd be looking out to hear some of those, uh, some of his greatest hits, mm-hmm. you know, re- redone by yours truly. And uh, hopefully I'll do him some justice and uh, his fans will be able to, get, you know, get a glimpse of what Willie Banks was all about, you know. So, uh be looking out for that. Um, 
it's, it's going to be out the top of next year. I don't, I can't say exactly when because, like I said, we have to make sure that everything is in place legally, you know, to be able to release that stuff. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited about it because um, there's a generation that needs to know um, about Willie Banks and what he brought to the gospel industry, and um, I'm I'm just excited about being able to do that and to you know. Um, share share that legacy with with the people now the the messenger is still sing okay. you know but uh yeah i'm i'm gonna uh i'm gonna represent them too so yeah and uh hopefully we'll be able to come together and do something together before they get you know get too old to where they can't they can't travel anymore but um yeah those guys i love those guys willie Re- no willie mitchell and uh Jackie Hurd and Mike Watson, you know, we lost Henry Wesley a couple of years mm-hmm. back. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we got a uh, Freddie Barry and, you know, Joshua Stewart and, you know, those guys you know that, uh, that paved the way with, you know, those messengers. It's, it's been many messengers along the way that I can't, I probably can't name them all, but uh, yeah. those are the guys that I, you know, I grew up under. And uh, we're able to have, you know, have a relationship with and uh, get to meet and get to talk to, you know. So uh, I respect those guys a whole lot. And uh, hopefully I can, uh, you know, I can represent in the way that will make them all proud and, you know, honor my father in the best light possible. Oh, yes. And we'll, I'll tell you, I will. We'll be looking out for that. You said sometime beginning sometime early next year. Yeah, it's as soon as out. soon as I can like the 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 album is pretty much done. Mm-hmm. Uh we just gotta, you know, you, you know how you have to um because he was under certain record labels and stuff and we have to be able to make right. sure all the rights and you know everything are in place, you know, so that I don't know nobody trying to sue me or you know just, you know you have to take care right. of business on the on the back, you know, behind the scenes, you know. Oh yeah. You know oh. all right that's Hey, you, y'all heard it here, folks. Now y'all go on and y'all be on the lookout for it. Now we and, can sing the stuff. We can sing it, but you know, as far as recording it and selling it, you know, yeah, being able, like, if you want to buy it, you know, so we can definitely sing the stuff, though. Ain't nothing, ain't no law against singing it. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's <laughs> yes, indeed. And, and you say y'all done traveling for the year. Well, if you want to, you, you're free to give out your. So booking information, anybody that might want to book you for the um, okay. Year coming um, up. um, well, let me let me pull this up really quick. Um, because I don't have yeah, any no business cards all. with me because I'm on the road right now, but uh, um, oh, no problem at all. But um, you can call if you want to book the group for next year, this coming year, you can reach us at oh, give me one second. Uh, you can reach us at uh, 414-949-4127. And uh, my, my booking manager will let you know what, what needs to happen. And uh, we'll go from there. So that number again is 414-949-4127. Uh, and uh, right. mm-hmm. Willie Banks and the End Time Messengers. All right, yo. And that I N T I M E. So, well, yep. Yeah. No, uh, oh, you, you, you got something else you want? Oh, yeah. Anything else you want to say? Um. Well, I, I want to say I appreciate you uh, consider me. To, you know the interview, and, you know, and uh, finding value in speaking with me you know uh i don't count myself to be anything great you know so um any opportunity that i get you know to share what i'm trying to do and to you know um bring light to my dad's history and you know his music and his legacy i counted the honor and the privilege and uh i just you know um ask that the people of god would keep me in their prayers and that uh God would uh, keep me healthy and str- and thrust us forward in, uh, in our efforts. 
and uh and I'm, I'm excited to see uh what's going to happen what god is going to do in this journey because uh to be honest i was you know i was just gonna keep doing my my, my bass stuff you know playing bass and doing my solos bass record and uh i was happy mm -hmm. doing that but um god had a different plan so um uh, i just ask that the people of god will keep me in your prayers keep me in my group in your prayers and uh and um i'll do the same for you all and um Let's let's lift up the name of Jesus a little bit higher. All right, and that's been Willie Banks Jr. I, uh, again, I appreciate you for agreeing to come on, and y'all um, be on the lookout for the new project next year. God bless to say the same. And um, I, again, I, I appreciate you coming on, and and um, I, I really hope. How everyone that's listening, however you're listening, where you're listening from, thank y'all for tuning in, and I hope you got something out of it. And um, till then, God bless you all.